on the mountain where the course is wide. Two cool racers standing side by side. Yeah, they're fuel injected Rozzies and Bionic K2s. Cranking down their binders, getting ready to cruise. Tuck the course, tuck the course, said he's gonna get some air. Whew. Declining countdown at an even rate. At the count of one, they both accelerate. Yeah, the Rozzies are lightning and they're starting to spin. But the new K2s are really digging in. Gotta be cool now, World Cup, here we come. Yeah. Hello everybody, I'm Deb Armstrong from the Taos Ski Valley and that was a little jingle that some ski racing buddies and I made up when we were junior racers up in the Pacific Northwest. So my topic today is peak performance, the mind game of performing in the moment, which is what I'm doing right now before you. So you may be wondering why in the world I'm up here on this ball. Well, frankly, I had no idea how I was going to do with this exercise. First time to demo team tryouts, giving a presentation. I don't sing in public every day. I don't balance on this ball like this every day. So this clearly is a very unique situation for me. But to be here on this ball right now in front of all of you, I've had to go through a process. A process of drawing on the peak performance skills which I'd like to share with you today. So I've defined peak performance as doing the best with what you got. Your talent, your skills, and your knowledge. Doing poorly is not hopeless, it's copeless. It's a coping or mental skill deficiency. And we need coping skills to be able to be at our mental best to reach that peak performance. So I've identified three skills and attributes which I believe are crucial if we're going to get to that state of mind to be able to reach our peak performance. Now of course there's many others but due to time today I'm not going to be able to go over all those. So. The three skills and attributes that I'd like to cover today are excitement, eager, e eagerness, and curiosity for the event, visualization skills, and goal setting skills. So to start with, <laughs> eagerness and excitement and curiosity for the event. I felt all of this today prior to this presentation. Now initially, I felt intense fear and apprehension about this whole idea and whole concept of giving, the, giving the, this presentation and standing on this ball in front of all of you. So I had to go through a process of pretending, of tricking my brain, of fooling myself, of channeling those negative feelings of fear and apprehension into positive feelings of curiosity, eagerness, and excitement for this event. I had to convince myself that this really is an opportunity. An opportunity to get to know myself a little bit better. I had no idea how I was going to feel prior to getting on that ball. This was an opportunity for me to have a new experience and I was excited about that. So why in the world does that matter? Why do we care? Because I believe to be at our peak performance, to be at our best, we need to have desire, not for the outcome, but desire for the happening, desire for the experience, for the uniqueness of the experience. So I've got a story I'd like to share with you. In 1984, I was lucky enough to be a member of the, of the Olympic team. And I knew prior to going into that event, it was going to be unlike anything that I had ever experienced in my lifetime unlike any World Cup race, any athletic competition. It was going to be different. And whatever came along with that circumstance, I wanted to experience it. Was I going to be more nervous, less nervous? Was I going to be tired? Was I going to be hungry? I had no idea what was going to come along with it, but bring it on. So, 
However I was going to feel in the starting gate, which could be a time for many of apprehension, I wanted to be there so badly because I wanted that unique experience. I had to convince myself that I felt the same way about being on this ball in front of all of you. It was kind of interesting and fun. Okay, next topic. Next skill or attribute. The ability to visualize and place oneself in the moment. So how many of us, the last two days, while being here at Demo Team Tryouts, were up there on the hill before doing our tasks, and we were distracted in one way or another. Maybe we were thinking about the selectors down at the base and what they were going to think about us. Or maybe we were thinking about all of our peers up uh, above who were going to be watching us. And were they going to be critical? What were they going to think of us? Maybe our mind is just distracted thinking about something at home. Our brain has a tendency to be easily distracted. And visualization skills can pull us back into the moment. You can't practice visualization mindlessly. You have to be very mindful about what's going on. So like technical skills, this takes practice. Visualization skills become extremely effective after you practice them and you actually start to feel the adrenaline flowing through your body and the muscles start to tense up a little bit like as if you were there. This just takes us one step closer to that peak performance experience. We've already practiced it in our minds. Practicing for this presentation today, being on the ball in the gym, I'd get to the gym, I'd stand on the ball and I tried to visualize every situation that I might be encountered with right now. I tried to envision the color of the carpet. I tried to envision all of you watching me. I tried to envision hecklers in the back, and I tried to envision worst case scenarios, all in anticipation for this event, placing myself here. Finally, goal setting skills. Dreams versus goals. Dreams are desirable, but unpredictable. They're often not reached, and they're generally a very long way off. But if you combine those dreams with effective goal setting skills, now we're getting somewhere. Set goals that are within reach and re reachable in a reasonable amount of time. Goals give you a target. And if you set effective goals, then reaching your goals becomes a habit. This in turn will perpetuate, perpetuate reaching more goals. If you don't set good goals, then not reaching your goals can also become a habit. And that would be a bad habit. So, over the years, I've practiced goal setting. And I've gotten in the habit of reaching my goals. So when the idea crept into my mind that maybe I could stand on this ball in front of all of you for this presentation, I had confidence in my goal setting ability and going through the steps along the way to prepare myself to get there then maybe I could be successful with it. So in conclusion, peak performance covers a wide spectrum of activities. It could be all of the ski tasks that we've been doing the last couple days. It could be the interview that we're going to be conducting. Or it could be giving a presentation or running our first marathon. But if peak performance is important, then eagerness, excitement, and curiosity gives life and energy for the event. Visualization provides the additional practice in anticipation. And goal setting skills provide the small realistic steps along the way to make those dreams come true. Thank you.